if you are speaking just now, in this time of changing um, about this issue and the challenges linked to that, and in particular at the SILAC summit, accompanying measures from the, from the alternative uh, structures. And as, as it was said, we have to, to keep equal distances. I would make just in the beginning the question mark. Should we really speak about equal distances or shouldn't we speak that when we are thinking of alternatives, of structures, of methodologies and the economic and trade and commercial uh, cooperation between continents, between countries, uh, about the question we have to be inclusive, we have to be responsible, we have to be rethinking the relationship without the block confrontation. And unfortunately, we are in a situation that we are again approaching such a block confrontation. And we should do everything, including also the problems and challenges both to the ETUC, to the ITUC, uh, to, to the trade unions at the national level, when we are thinking about how to, to sure, uh, ensure uh, creating job places, labor and dignity, uh, equality, overcoming the gap between the poor and the rich, which is unfortunately growing and growing day by day. And just now the um, Venbro, it is an organization of the development organization in Germany, had published um, a paper which is focusing on four billion people in the world without any security, safety, security, and social security. So that I think, uh, not speaking about all the other figures, you know that better than me. And, uh, but that is the reality. And that uh, leads me to, a, to, the, to the main point I want to focus on. Finally, the South-North dialogue is also a question of democracy how the democratic structuring in our societies is based, is realized, is implemented, is transparency about the decision-making processes both in the European Union as well as, for example, in the Latin American countries when we are speaking about trade agreements or economic cooperation or investment uh, which has to be done. Um, and uh, all these, this, this democratic uh, approach leads me to the, to the remark that when we in the morning had a five hours debate conference on the Mercosur agreement, uh, I mean the figures, the discussions, all the contribution has been very valuable. But we have to be frank to ourselves, that was not the majority in the countries, in the member states, who are dealing with the decision making. So how we are going out, out of our components, compounds, meetings, conferences, to go to people and to try to convince them to make the right choice in elections, in, 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 in developing a participatory democracy. And um, the conference on the future of Europe, where I had been in the world, was just such a learning point, because normal people, more or less, I don't want to dispute the question how the participants have been chosen by a randomly selected uh, distributor, but um, they had worked two years very hard on the theme how they want to shape the future of Europe. And they came clearly out, they want a social Europe, they want a union, they want a, a a uh, health union, they want an environment and, 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 and uh, energy union, uh, and of course they also wanted to have a unified, uh, one complex foreign policy. And that is linked then just now to our reality. So do we want really that European Union as such is a construction, is a structure, is a, is a tool which is speaking in the name of more or less 500 million people across the 27 member states and maybe tomorrow even more uh, in the international forum. 
and how we are structuring then these one foreign and probably also trade policy which we're dealing today already with is based democratically how we are forming that who is then the decisive body and these are questions um, coming to my mind when when we have to uh, to think um, how to to shape this uh, cooperation uh, uh, between our continents but worldwide between Asia and European Union between Africa and the European Union Latin America Union, European Union and within the Europe within Europe, between the European Union and other European uh, countries. And probably I agree with all what has been said about taxation, redistribution, democratization, peace building, greening, food health and um, energy sovereignty. But there is also one point, if you speak about this danger of block building, that's a trade war linked to a technological war on war about technologies is leading to a cultural divide again in the world. And I think that is the biggest danger today because if you have two uh, different uh, technological blocks in the world, then people are forced to use different um, technologies, etc. And that will grow the gap between us, between the countries and here I think see the responsibilities that we really have to invent or reinvent the discussion about the new economic world order. Thank you.